Hello, Janie from Inky and Scrappy. Welcome back to all of my subscribers, and if you've yet to subscribe, please consider subscribing as you'll be alerted when new videos go up on the channel, and it helps the channel grow. I am back with card six in my high five card series. This one is a lift the flap card. I'm going to start by die cutting my panel out with the second largest slimline die from Lawn Fawn, and then I'm going to Bring in the a bug deal stamp set for those branches and the leaves there. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to need these placed on my card. I actually thought about die cut, die coloring and the die cutting out the branches and putting them on the top. But with the lift the flap, I find it's easier to do a flat panel, I guess you could say. So. I didn't want my background to have all of these layers of cardstock for my die to have to cut through. And so I changed pace a little bit and ended up just stamping directly onto the front panel there. And I'm just trying to figure out how my hives are going to hang from the branches because I want each flap to have a different color hive on it. I need to have a place for said hive to make its home and hang out. So by using the die I'm just kind of roughly guesstimating where those hives are going to be on my front slimline panel there. And then I will come in with the leaf stamp and then just stamp leaves on my branches. Yes, I did stamp everything out on a piece of Avery labels, like removable label, and was planning on cutting it out and then laying that over the top to mask. And I was being lazy and didn't mask anything on this one. I did pull in a piece of scrap paper to just mask part of the stamp off so it didn't overlap one of the other stamps. And so you'll see that here. It's off screen because, you know, I don't pay attention to where the camera is when I'm actually creating. <sighs> Amateur, I know. So I will continue to clean off my workspace. The big thing on this one was I did not want ink to get on the back of my panel because I didn't want to have to try to fix the back of my panel once I had the front of my panel done. So there is my finished stamping on the panel. And so here's where I was probably supposed to come in with the mask. And since I decided not to mask, I just did a light hand with some dye ink. This is sky ink from close to my heart, but any dye ink would be fine. You don't want to use oxides if you're going to color with alcohol markers. The oxides can ruin the tips of your alcohol markers. Or so I've been told I try to avoid using markers with oxides at all costs. And then I'm going to bring in my G, I shouldn't say G because they're not lettered, but my 4647. And I did have 48 there, but I don't actually end up using it to the best of my knowledge. I will color the one on screen here, and then I actually took the whole panel into the other room and, you know, colored well the rest of the family ate and watched TV. And then for my browns, I end up using 98 and 95. So that's the one leaf, and that's the basics of how I colored all of them. I didn't do anything majestically wonderful with the coloring. I kept it very simple. A, it wasn't the main point or the focal point of my card. It was just the background panel to my card. So I'm lining this up with my ruler here to try to make sure that I get it centered as best as I can. I am not a measure twice, cut once kind of girl. I'm a measure once and 
eh, it looks good. But for this one, I did actually try to make sure that it was where it was supposed to be. And because my flaps lift up, and I didn't want to have to do something on the inside to cover those up. I just took out my light table. This is a super cheap light table from Amazon. I can link it below. I think it was like $16 or something. It's super slimline. It does not have a battery, so it does need a USB cable to actually work. But it is, it works wonderfully. So I'm just going over, it just kind of shows me where the lines are. It's nothing great. I'm just trying to cover up those, you know, bleed through spots with the alcohol ink. So when you lift the flap, it looks like it's finished, I guess, on the inside without adding any more bulk to that card front. So now that my base panel is done, I'm going to bring in my colored images for this part just to kind of figure out my color combinations here. I'm using a worn lipstick and is that picked raspberries? No, festive berries. So worn lipstick and festive berries for the pink on this one to coordinate with that pink. I will list the colors in the blog post if you are interested in my Ohuhu color choices here. I do have them written down somewhere. I think they're on the back of my B color swatch panel. For the purples, I'm using Wilted Violet and Shaded Lilac, Shaded Lilac being the lighter shade. And then for that teal color, I'm going to use the lighter two of those teal shades that I used on the shaped hexagon card. So Salvage Patina and then was it Mermaid Lagoon? No, Peacock Feathers. And Peacock Feathers. And then I'm just going to lay that over the top to make sure. And I needed to fill in just a little bit here. Nothing dramatic. So I just rotated my stencil so I didn't actually clean it again in between those colors. And then, of course, um, inky fingers, and I got ink on the front of my panel. I'll fix that later. So I die cut all of my images out. And yes, I had colored a whole bunch of images, so I just sat and die cut it for like, I don't know, an hour. It took forever. Now I remember why I like the color skin and cut. <sighs> so I'm just figuring out hive placement here. And I was planning on using the bees from the set. And then I decided, you know, I needed something for the little lift the flap knobs. Do you really need something for the little lift the flap knobs? No, but I decided I wanted something there for the little lift the flap knobs. So I brought out some old school huge brads I ended up going with. And while I was digging in my many buckets of beads and bling and just things, I found three little B buttons. So I'm pretty sure the buttons come from Jesse Jane's buttons or buttons galore and more. And they're just three tiny little bees. I just thought it'd be fun to throw those on the front. So I'm just cutting off the backs to these buttons with my cutter, I said cutter bee scissors. I don't know, it's a sharp scissors and it cuts fairly close to where that button shank is, so it's easy enough to cut those off. And then I'm just going to lay these on the front. Figuring out placements, I didn't want them all to be in a straight row, that's why that one ended up switching. And then I'm going to bring in my little strips from scrapbooks.com here. So these are the eighth inch strips. And then just run those along the outsides. I already had the lines on there to help guide me with my shading on the inside. So I knew where my inside pieces went. So those little scraps just are helping to hold up the middle pieces in between those flaps. And then I only used one strip on the bottom because otherwise 
it was a little tight to put the whole thing in there. So I'm just coming in with one little bead trail and I'm going to end up using just one for all three of these little bees. And so it's, you know, how you get a little bit more out of your stamping and, you know, saving space. But I had to use the bee trail to cover up my little inky smudge earlier. And so I do like how the little bee trails ended up turning out. And then by just putting a little bit of glue on the one side by the bee, I could cut it off and then put a little bit more glue on and add it to the other the other part of the panel, I guess, so I didn't have to worry about trying to cut in between the flap and the rest of the panel. And then just using up that last little piece for my last little bee. And then I'm going to pop these on the front here. So by pulling up those, just the corners, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room on placement, as does the little bit of glue that I'm going to put in those middle ones. So by lining it up in the opposite corner that's not pulled, I can get it on straight. And then, of course, I forgot that the bottom one was in two strips, but it came off. That's all good. So my glass mat is magnetic, so I'm just pulling in some of those strong magnets to help hold my flaps open. So the idea behind the purple honey, we took a trip and went to a lavender farm a few years, well, a bunch of years back. I would say a few years, and it was probably like five or six years ago. But we went to the lavender fields, and they had lavender-infused honey, and yes, it is purple. So that was the you know, inspiration behind my purple honey. And so since there's lavender honey, I figured there's probably strawberry infused honey or passion fruit infused honey. I suppose I could have done blueberry style infused honey for my blue one, but I just decided to leave that regular honey colored. And then for my little sentiments, I took the burp from the the strawberry patch, the very special stamp set. And then I'm adding a little bit of pink to that honey dipper because that first bee ate all of his honey. He was a hungry little honey bee and it tasted good. And then we have the queen bee there with her lavender honey and she's just buzzing. And then we have the last one with the most honey pots, and he just says, yum. And my fingers must have gotten glue on them because they're super sticky and nothing wants to leave them. <sighs> it is what it is, right? And then I'm going to come in with some diamond sickles for my wings. And then, of course, I'm going to add some glossy accents to those honey pots. I've been waiting to do this forever because, ugh, glossy accents on honey pots. It's just made to be, right? And, of course, I add a little bit of glossy accents to that pink I put on the honey dipper. So it looks like glossy honey. And then this sat overnight and dried. I walked away at this point because, yeah, if I'd have moved it or touched it or anything, you know and I know I would have ended up gluing this flap shut because <sighs> patience is not my strong suit. So the next day, I knew what I wanted to say with this one for the most part. I mean, I wanted it to be about, you know, being yourself or be who you want to be. So be pink honey or purple honey or blue honey, whatever you want to be. It's, you know, it's all good. So I'm using some Yeti pigment ink for my white here. I am going to heat emboss over the top. And yes, that first one did not come out the greatest. I wasn't too worried because I knew I was cutting this off anyways. I'm using some white alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And then I will fill in, because my ink wasn't totally wet, I didn't work fast enough, I didn't use my Misty. I just 
you know. I'm bringing in that white jelly roll pen to help fill in that white just to you know add a little bit white to a couple of spots that probably weren't as white as I wanted them to be or that the powder didn't stick as good as it should have if I would have gotten the powder on there faster and then I will add that to a yellow piece of I think it's sunflower cardstock from Lawn Fawn or from close to my heart don't quote me on that one and I will add that to my card base here. And then add my sentiment to the top in the middle. And then I was just making sure that it wasn't in the way of that last flap. And then I'm just coming in with a black pen there to clean up the little stray embossing powder there. So I'm using a Dilutions stamp that says BU, the world will adjust. But of course, I did the BU on front. And of course, I did the play on words when it came to B. So I'm just selectively inking that to the world will adjust. And then I'm going to add a little something something in the inside to tie with my front. So I couldn't decide which B I wanted to do. And then I decided, well, you know. We're just going to put the party bee on there. So when I batch colored, I did not color in any of the accessories. So that way I could coordinate them with the card they were going to go on when I actually put them on a card. And my Uhuhus are in their travel bag. I had picked out a whole bunch of colors to coordinate with some future card series I'm going to do and had stamped out a bunch of stuff. So there's more coming. I just have to you know, sit down, finish coloring, and then start creating. I have a whole bunch of ideas. It's just finding the time to actually get them done. So there is the finished card front with the different colored hives and the coordinating honey on the inside. And I love those three colors together. They're so pretty. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful week. And we will see you back here soon. So make sure you are subscribed and getting that notification. And please keep getting inky.